Hello and welcome to week four of SAS Bootcamp. Um, in this week of this bootcamp, we are going to learn two very simple but incredibly powerful and useful concepts within SAS. We are going to talk about SAS arrays and how to merge data sets in SAS. Both of these things are pretty simple concepts to begin with, but they have incredible potential. And if you are working on health services research, you will find arrays and merges as part of, I would say, nearly every single project that I have worked on in this, uh, in this field. Uh, within arrays, we are going to talk about how to define an array, how to reference an array, and calling an array within a do loop. And then we will go over certain applications of arrays within health outcomes research um, and some examples of doing so. For merges, we will talk about vertical merging or what is usually called stacking. And then we'll talk about horizontal merging with one to one, one to many, and different types of merges as well. In this video, we are going to begin by learning about the introduction to arrays, right? Before I do this, let me first open the data set that we are going to work with today. And I want to walk you through what this data set looks like. So the data set that we are going to work with is patient underscore information, patient underscore info. This data set is a, is a fake data set, obviously. But I have structured this data set to look very similar to any insurance administrative claims data set. The goal behind doing that is because I want you to get familiar with the general structure of these data sets through this boot camp and through our homeworks and videos so that when you come to the Department of Pharmacy Administration at the University of Mississippi and you want to work on Medicare or Medicaid data, then you will already be familiar with the structure of these data sets and what kinds of steps you need to do in order to do your research. Having said that, let me introduce you to what this data set looks like. So this data set has 11 columns. Uh, the first one is a Benny ID. Benny is usually short for beneficiary or an enrollee in any health insurance plan. So Benny ID is simply the ID variable. We have 18 individuals, all identified from one through 18. Um, and for each individual, we have their gender, MRF, we have their race, we have their date of birth. And then we have seven different variables that are of interest to us. These seven variables are primarily telling us if this individual was enrolled in the health insurance that we are concerned about for the first seven months of the year 2017. So in 2017, January 01, a one tells you that the individual is eligible, a zero tells you they were not eligible or they were not enrolled. So for January, all 18 individuals were enrolled in this health insurance. February, all 18 individuals were enrolled. If you come to April, you'll see that this particular individual has a zero. They were not enrolled into the health insurance program, but they enrolled back again in May and so on and so forth. Right? So you'll see another example here in June, for example, this individual was not enrolled in June, but they were enrolled in May and they enrolled back again in July so on and so forth. So, so these seven variables tells you if an individual is enrolled in the insurance program for each given month. So let us go ahead and use this data set to give an introduction to arrays. The first thing I want to do is I'll, I'll write a uh, data statement. Okay, now let me begin by saying this before we go any further. What is an array? An array is simply a convenient shorthand way of referring to a set of variables for a short period of time. So it is a temporary uh, shortcut and it is nothing but a shortcut. An array is not a new data set. It's not a data structure. It's not even a new variable. An array is simply a convenient nickname, if you will, for several variables at a time. Now, arrays can have multiple dimensions and arrays can become very complex, but we are only going to learn a simple one dimensional array for the purpose of this bootcamp, because that is primarily what I've had to use as part of health outcomes research. Uh, let me show you what an array looks like. Uh, let me begin by showing you how you define an array, and then we can also talk about uh, how this applies to the data set. So the way to define an array is to simply write the word array, and then give your array a name. I, and you can choose any name you want, just like a variable, right? I remember an array is not a variable, but you can give it any name you want. I think I'm going to call my array a cake. Right? I'm just going to call it something silly. Uh, and right after you give it a name, within these curly brackets, you need to write down how many variables you want to be present in your array. Well, I want seven variables in my array because I'm trying to create a shorthand notation for the seven eligibility variables that we've seen here. Right? Uh, eligibility is 2017 January all the way through eligibility, excuse me, eligibility 2017 up to July. I want to create a shorthand notation for doing all that. So there are multiple ways I can tell 
SAS how to enter. I can tell SAS which variables go in that array, right? I can simply type out the names of all the variables I'm interested in. So ELG 2017-01-02. Let me copy and paste this to move it along a little faster. So I can simply do this. I can type out the names of every single variable I want, finish with the semicolon, and that's it. That's my array statement. Once I've written the statement, what SAS will realize is that the next time I want to refer to one of these seven variables, I can just use the word cake, which is a shortcut now, to refer to one of those seven variables. Uh, writing down this list of seven variables like this is one way to do it. But if you really don't want to write down seven variables like this, there are some shortcuts to do that as well. You can simply add a hyphen between the two variables and, and whether or not you include a space before or after the hyphen really does not make a difference. But if you include a little hyphen between the first and the last variable, SAS will understand that the only thing you need to do is it needs to increment the 0, 1 up to 0, 7 in order to get the list of all the variables that need to be included in the array cake. Right? And this will only work if you have, if your variable names have a prefix and a suffix. As in, in here, for example, the prefix of my variable name is ELG underscore 2017 underscore. And the suffix is the numeric number that SAS can simply in increment knowing that there is a hyphen. So if there is a hyphen, SAS will look for that suffix that it will increment. And then you don't have to actually type out the names of all seven variables. If your variables don't have a set prefix suffix with a numeric number at the end, you can use the double hyphen operator. The double hyphen operator basically says, go look in the data set and then find all of my variables from ELG 2017 underscore 01 up to ELG 2017 underscore 07 and include every variable located in between those two variables. So, so it is going off of the order of the variables in the data set. So if you don't have a suffix and a prefix, then you can use the double hyphen in order to get SAS to understand what variables belong in the array. But if nothing else, you can always write out the name of every single variable that you want to be included within that array. Um, and that's it. That's, the, that's how you define an array. It's a very simple statement. When you define an array, it actually changes nothing about your data set. So let me show you guys what I mean. I want to, I'm, I'm creating a new data set called array underscore demo based off of this definition. And if I hit execute, you'll see my log looks fine. My output data still has 11 columns. There is no 12th column called cake because an array is not a variable name. It doesn't create anything in the data set that you can visually look at or examine. It's just a shortcut for referring to those variables. So now that we've seen how to define the array, let's talk about how you can actually call the array. The advantage of an array is that once you've defined an array, like this array cake, which has seven variables, you don't have to write out the name of each variable every single time in order to look at that, in order to uh, get the value of that variable. Instead, you can use the array's position number to get at that. What do I mean by that? So within an array, let's say this array, there are seven variables. Every variable has a position number. The first variable in this array is the eligibility for 2017 January. The second position is February. The third position is 03 or March. Fourth position is 04 and so on and so forth. Right? So the next time I want to refer to the cake array at position one, that is basically saying you want the value of the variable that is the first variable in that array. So I can say first array value equals cake underscore one. What this is doing is it is taking, it is taking, it's creating a new variable called first array value and it is making it equal to the array cakes first variable in the first position of the array cake, if that makes sense. So this should be equal to ELG underscore 2017 underscore zero one. And if you want to make it more complicated, you can say, let's say we'll do another example and then we'll open the data set. The sixth array value, should be equal to the variable in the sixth position of the array cake. So if I hit run, let me check my data set. Okay. Now I'm doing my output. Now I have two variables here, the first array value and the sixth array value. This first array value 
column should be the exact same. Excuse me, I think I sorted the data set by accident. Uh, so this first array value variable should be the exact same as ELG 2017 underscore 01 because that is the first variable within the array cake. Similarly, the sixth array value should be the same as 2017 uh, underscore 06. And you can actually see that one, one, zero in the second row, zero in the second row, right? So the array basically lets you define a shortcut for a bunch of variables and then refer to them merely by mentioning the number of the position that the variable is located in within that array, right? And it's basically a shortcut way to do that. Uh, and while this might look really simple, it actually has very, very useful applications. Let me go ahead and show you guys one of those applications. But let's say you want to check the number of months that an individual is eligible using the same data set that we looked at earlier. So using the same data set, we want to just count how many months an individual was eligible for. Now, there is a really simple way to do this. We can just take this variable, add it to this variable, add it to this variable, and we can just sum all the variables we are interested in. But let's say we want to use arrays to do this, right? And we want to do it slightly differently. So I'm going to go ahead and define my array that I'm going to call cake again. ELG. I'm going to tell the array what variables belong in there. And next, what I need to do is I need to basically find a way to sum these arrays. Now, sum the variables in the array. I can refer to each of these variables. I can do, I can do this a couple of different ways, right? So I can basically say a new variable, uh, eligibility months equals. If I did not want to use arrays, I would just say, Zero two. Let's see if we can speed this up a little bit. Right, so I can simply do this. I can say <clears throat> sum my variables, and I can just list my variables, or I can actually use the array to do this. So I can say take one. Take two plus cake three. I can write the same thing and it will create, I can write this equation, for example, and it will create the same output as the previous one because all it is doing is it is taking the first variable in the cake array, adding it to the second variable in the cake array, the third variable in the cake array, so on and so forth. But really, in order to uh, fully be able to take the potential of the arrays, you need to combine arrays with do loops. And let me show you how. If you remember from our la video last week, in a do loop, we, have a, we are basically looping a certain set of code over and over again based on a counter variable, right? So let me go ahead and do the same thing now. So let's say I want to you, you write a do loop for a counter variable i that goes from one through seven. Okay. Now I can use this counter variable i as a replacement for my position argument within the array call statement. So instead of writing cake underscore one, I can say cake i, right? Um, let me do this. I can say if cake i equals one, then eligible months equals eligible months plus one. And I want to set it to zero before I do that. Let me go ahead and comment out these pieces of code and show you guys why this works. So what we are doing here is we are first setting this variable to zero and then we are writing a do loop that goes over seven times and each time it increments this counter variable i from one to seven, right? 
and then it basically calls on the cake array for each position in that array because when i equals one cake i is basically cake one which is eligibility for january and it will check if eligibility for january is one and if it is then it will take this eligible months variable and add one to it and then i gets incremented to two and then cake i is now cake two which is the second variable within the cake array which is elig2017 underscore zero two the february variable right and if that is equal to one it will add one more value to the eligible months variable and then it will go for go to i equals three check eligibility for march and then i equals four check eligibility for april so on and so forth and essentially it is doing the same thing as we wrote earlier but it is using arrays within a do loop to accomplish that let me check my log Log looks okay. Um, here's my eligible months variable, right? I, we have the i counter variable that's incremented to eight because that's where it stopped for every single row. But you'll see that the eligible months variable is actually now the sum of all of these variables. So for the second row where there is a zero, you'll see that the eligible months is six. For for the other row, it's a seven. There's only one other row with a six because I've got ones everywhere except for right here and right here. So this is one way to use arrays, and this is a really simple application, but I want to demonstrate how you can define an array and call on it within a do loop. And next, in the next video, we will talk about applications of this, and we will talk about how to use this with uh, many, many more variables, and how you can really use the power of do loops in combination with arrays to accomplish a lot of things.